Oh, don't you ever forget, procrastination is the killer of all your hopes and dreams. Whatever you have been imagining and hoping for, it sits on the altar of action versus procrastination. Procrastination is the killer of all hopes and dreams. What most people think is the killer of hopes and dreams is where they were born, their IQ, what they look like, how tall they are. Men have their own set of insecurities. Women have their own set. Women are concerned with looking young. Men are concerned with looking strong, <laughs> looking powerful. But these aren't anything to worry about. All oh, men are concerned about uh, that skin color is a big thing now in my ethnicity and this. And, oh, I was born here and I'm, oh, capitalism is destroying me here and this and that and or taxes. That's nothing. This is an irrelevant point in the game. The game is decided on the playing field of those who procrastinate and those who don't. That's the playing field. Now, some people have more natural genius, natural IQ. And so they have to work a little bit less hard but at the end of the day it's like the inventor said you know he was the wealthiest man in the world when he died edison and he said you know what he did was 99 percent perspiration one percent inspiration 99 persper 99 percent perspiration is not just hard work it's perseverance it's never giving up it's never procrastinating it's when the path is easier here he went that way it's the two paths in the road, the wide, Jesus Christ said, the, the path that's wide, and most people go on it in the path that's narrow. Frost wrote the, the story, you know, the poem of the two paths that meet in the woods, and he took the path less trod upon, and it made all the difference in his life. What is that path? What is the narrow path? Procrastinators, you won't have to get all fancy. Look, I build big businesses. I built small businesses that did a million bucks a year, medium-sized businesses that did 10 to 100, and large ones that did more than 100 million a year, way more. And what I've learned through it all, it's all the same game. It's at slightly different scale. Let me give you a practical example. There's people who see an idea. They have an idea. Something comes to mind. I had an idea that, um, you know, I remember one of my first ideas was an online education course. And I didn't see anybody doing it for business. There was this guy, Mike Chang. He had six-pack ads. This is like 2013, 2014. And he would just YouTube ads. Before every video I'd watch, this guy would, was this Asian dude with no shirt on. And he had the six-pack. And he's like, oh, I got six-pack shortcuts. Watch my video and then buy my course. And I'll teach you how I got a six-pack. And I was thinking, hmm, this is interesting. Now, luckily, by that point in my life, I had overcome procrastination. It used to be a bigger issue. Well, when I was 19, I went to work with a farmer named Joel Salton, and he basically <laughs> whipped it out of me, not literally. So by the time I saw that YouTube ad, Mike Chang, Six Pack Shortcuts, I was done with procrastination. I got on an airplane. I thought I found out he was speaking at a little conference in, uh, what was the name of it? is in Utah. It was a, one of these, these guys had bought this mountain. <laughs> these, all these entrepreneurs have bought this mountain. I forget the name right now. I'll remember in a second. You can Google it. And I went there and Mike Chang was there and I just started talking to him and I sat through, you know, I didn't procrastinate. I was like, how do you do it? What's your formula? Blah, blah, blah. And I became friends with him. And then lo and behold, a year later, I launched my, here in my garage, which was a YouTube ad campaign pre-roll. That thing was making 50 to hundred grand a day net. Because I didn't procrastinate. The idea and the opportunity in my mind was pursued. See, the opposite of procrastination is pursuit. People think the opposite of procrastination is always, you know, is never putting things off. That's not what it is because it took me a year to launch my hair in my garage. It wasn't an instant process. But I immediately pursued the idea. So the opposite of procrastination is people who pursue who persevere. We keep the three P's. <laughs> Procrastination is the bad P. The good P is pursuit slash perseverance. It takes longer than you think. You know, one thing I've told people for years is you can get anything you want in life, but it'll take one or two years longer than your original plan. And that takes pursuit and perseverance. So I remember, and by the way, all the things I regret in life are the ones that I thought about without pursuing. <laughs> An example of that was like, I remember there was a point in my life where I was like, I want to do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. 
and I started studying Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and I was like, <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with studying, but studying is not the pursuit. It was I was in my own head, and I was like googling it, and like, oh, is Jiu-Jitsu better than Taekwondo or Muay Thai or this? And I started, I I was like, you know, you, you see people they get in forums on Discord or whatever, they're all Reddit, and they're like all arguing. That's not the pursuit. That doesn't count. That's still in the realm of procrastination. That doesn't mean you never research, but research as you pursue. So finally, I got off my ass. I was like, wait a second. I want to do jujitsu. Let me just test it. And I tried out karate and I tried out judo. I did judo when I was like 12. I started judo. So I launched experiments. And I remember going to a Gracie studio in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'd be like, mm, this is pretty interesting. I mean, I've been doing Brazilian jiu-jitsu for many, many, many years. And being stuck in research mode too long is deadly. And so the reason I'm recording this little rant, because I get people following me. And even though I love books, here's a new book I was just reading. I just went to Barnes & Noble. And the guy said, I always ask the Barnes & Noble person, what's the most books you've ever seen? He's like, you bought the most. He said, you don't even work there three months. But he's like, you bought the most. But the reason I do that is I research while I'm on the go. Some people procrastinate research. They read and procrastinate. The book becomes the obstacle. You know, there's a book called The Obstacle is the Way. Sometimes the book is the obstacle because you're not always pursuing, also pursuing. To me, books are research and research is like steroids. So let's just use this analogy. A lot of dudes want to have muscles. It's a pretty common thing. The average man wants upper body mass. The average man is about 75% strong. Uh, the average woman has only about 25% of the strength of, of, of the strongest man. I mean, okay. On upper body. Men are tremendously compete in the upper body in the physical realm in the last 10,000 years. It's a good book on this called The Story of the Human Body by Lieberman. And so men idolize large upper body mass. Okay. So let's say a dude, you're watching this and you want a big arm, you want a big chest, whatever. You want to be able to bench. Some dudes will get stuck in research mode, not realizing that research. And it's like, okay, which gym is the best? And you know, do you do free weights? Do you do this? Is the, I see people do, oh, what's the rep range? I, I bought bodybuilding.com. So I, my dad was a pro bodybuilder too. It's like people are sitting here researching, but they're really procrastinating. Now, if you pursue and you go to the gym, you launch an experiment. You don't worry about if you pick the best gym. It doesn't matter if you go to CrossFit first or if you do upper body work or if you do, you know, there's people just doing rings now. People going to the beach, they're doing rings. They, you can get shredded that way. So a person doesn't worry about getting it perfectly right. They're just like, I'm going to pursue some upper body strength. You just pursue it. And then books and research becomes like steroids of the mind. I say that in a good way. Steroids of the mind. Like they, t it, it exaggerates. It accentuates. It creates a compound effect to the results you will get. So when you research without pursuing something, you're procrastinating. If you research on the go as you pursue it, people will always tell, I want to make money. Oh, you want to make a million bucks? Sit in a chair right now, write out 20 things that will make you money. Ecom, selling courses. By the way, ecom is physical or digital. Uh, doing a marketing agency, doing an ecom agency, becoming a copywriter, affiliate marketing, building apps, becoming a coder, becoming good at AI, being a virtual COO or like working on Upwork, doing virtual work. So you write out eight things. Just pursue one. And then on the go, you're reading, you're buying courses, you're researching. But as you take action, and then that becomes the steroids that makes you get an exaggerated, an amazing compound effect, an exponential result. The opposite and the failed, and I see this all the time, people subscribe to 50 channels, trying to learn how to make their first million. 50 gurus, but they have never pursued seriously. Remember, it's two piece. Pursue with perseverance. I can't tell you how many people give up. Yeah, I saw Donald Trump say something. You know, people have mixed feelings on Donald Trump, but sometimes he says smart stuff. You know, not always like anybody's immortal. He's a mortal, not immortal. And something I thought I said that makes sense was he's like, you know, I see many people that would have succeeded, but they just give up. Pursue and persevere and do research, books, reading, buy courses, go to seminars on the way. Make sense? Anyway, good luck on your pursuit.